one in four young black men backing Trump? It's not a headline you would expect. A new NAACP poll finds black voter enthusiasm generally rising with Harris, but it has uncovered a surprising support for Trump among the younger black male population. What does this mean for the future of the black vote? Welcome back to You Can't Make This Shit Up. I can never point this thing right. That is your host, David Washington. I am your host, Callan Clark. And let's just jump in, straight into it, David. Why do we right, think this all is? All right, all right. Here we go. This? Thank you, Kellen. Uh, well, you know, the, the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, also known as the NAACP, had a uh, press release on the September 15th uh, that uh, came out and said, hey, you know, folks are, of course, are, my people uh, are coming out for Harris, uh, particularly uh, black women. That's the core of uh, the Democrats' uh, support and also for Vice President uh Kamala Harris's support. However, very quietly in the press release, and if you dig a little bit more into the data, their polling data, it showed that one in four black men, young black men, were trending towards Trump. And so some, you know, uh, other um, media picked up the story. And then uh, some, you know, pundits had their say in it. Um, even uh, Vice President Harris, uh, during the National, so National Association of Black Journalists, uh, mentioned this. Uh, she was uh, asked a question about um, the black vote. And yes, you know, the, come on, we have to be honest. The The black vote is a monolithic voting block for Democrats. It has been for uh, since I've been alive. Uh, so we're talking about half a century and even before that. Um, however, in this particular cycle, and we saw it in 2016, but in this particular cycle, I'm hearing and seeing uh, whether it's through streaming services or in public uh, talking to actual voters, a trend of Black people, particularly young Black men, leaning towards Trump. Yeah. And, and, and looking at the numbers of the NAACP, it's not extremely high. It's um, it's one, it's closer to one in four Black men in total and close to half of um, young black men. Um, you know, it is noted by some of the people that conducted the poll that a lot of the media reporting on this tend to exaggerate it a little bit. Like young black men support Trump. It's like, mm, mm, they also support Harris. You know, it, yeah. it's pretty, it's just pretty split now instead of being almost entirely Democrat. It's just now it's, it's pretty split. Um, and it is very interesting because this push hasn't really seemed to have applied to the women much at all. Um, right. and, and as well as um, a lot of the older black men, it hasn't really penetrated them as much either as it has with the younger ones. Um, which is, again, it's, it's, it's very interesting to try to like find the, figure out the root of this. Um, Cause I can't say I entirely know, like I have like ideas Right. Like, for instance, we see a lot more young black men running for office under the Republican banner, right? That's correct, young, yeah. Young to middle-aged black men running under the Republican banner, and the, and the Republicans actually being willing to run these candidates, um, which I think, perhaps with some young voters, um, it just dispels the idea to them that, you know, the Republican Party doesn't support them. It's like, oh, but they support black candidates, Therefore, that they therefore they are an open option for me to vote for, which before I might not have considered. It could be an effect like that. It could be something as simple as the rhetoric. You know, people. Right. You know, people hearing the rhetoric of Donald Trump saying, you know, Harris doesn't actually really support the black community, or she's a fake member of the black community. You know, 
whether you think it's true or not, maybe some people buy into that and that's what's causing this push. Maybe it's that they feel pampered by the Democrats or they feel um, talked down to by the Democrats. And so they just want to they just want to get that narrative out of their ear um, for pride or for any other reason. It's hard to say for sure. It's a, it's a combination of many, many things. Um, and I right. think over time as racism becomes a less dominant force in our society overall, it'll, there will always be people, I think. Um, and it's certainly not dead. Like some people like to suggest it is. Um, I don't know why people suggest that it's not really true. Um, as that becomes a less dominating factor in politics, especially related to the black community, it's still there, but it's not as front and center as it was, say, 30 years ago, 40, 50 years ago, right? It's not up there in the same way it was then. Um, maybe with that, you know, and it's more focused on things like immigration or economic issues or foreign policy, you know, maybe we're just seeing more of those beliefs come out, you know, in the absence of this overwhelming issues related to the black community where it's like you have an option to vote for my family and friends are you know overwhelmingly democrats uh that's a fact um i'm probably in my small circle of black family and black friends um i'm probably the one uh who is willing to hear both sides of, this, of uh, the political spectrum and point out the policy differences and argue for both sides. Um, let me take the racism part first. Um, yeah. Have I been, as a black man, I'm, I'm in my 50s. I'm in that generation that is pretty solid with the Democrats. Uh, in this uh, poll, it talked about the black women being 76, uh, black women over 50 uh, being 76% in favor of Harris, 66% of black men over 50 being uh, in favor of uh, Harris. That changes drastically to the younger generation, particularly with young black men. Racism, um, have I been the victim of, eh, I don't even want to say that. Let me say this, what the, the, the only color that really matters to me, and I, I, gotta, I gotta make this very clear, racism does exist and your exposure to it depends on your individual experience. What matters to me is the color of money that is in the transactions, the business transactions that I'm involved in, in regards to my political business and my canvassing business. If I am able to provide for myself, my family, my loved ones, because I'm actively working, engaged to build my business, it's the it's the bag, it's the money that matters at the end of the day. I can work with conservatives. I can work with liberals because I have a service or a product that I can deliver to them to help them, you know, market their business or win the campaign. And I'm not in the business of liking people. I'm not in the business of, you know, um, falling in line with a particular demographic. I'm I'm concerned about my kitchen table issues, and that means paying my bills. Mm -hmm. uh, if I've been in my at my age right now, have I been exposed to any type of racism or ignorance? I say ignorance, more racism. Definitely. But then again, none of these folks pay my bills. None of these folks, you know, come home with me. None of these folks care for me. So those who have presented ignorant towards me. I don't know them and I don't care about them. Fair. So now that we, we address the, the racism part and what young black men see in Donald Trump is that Donald Trump is a businessman. He gets after the bag. He gets paid and they want to be a boss like uh, Donald Trump. Uh, they want to 
uh, be able to provide. They want to be able to have the better things in life. So if they're looking at it the same way, again, personally, the way I look at it, taking care of their kitchen table issues or just being able to, you know, afford life in general, that's where I understand young black men and black men in general who tend to look at conservatives or look at the Republican Party or look at Donald Trump as a better alternative to the liberals, to the Democrats, to Vice President Harris. They're, yeah. they're tired of the identity politics. Yeah. And it's funny. Well, they're tired of those identity politics specifically. Mm-hmm. I think we have a very image focused political environment right now where a lot of it's it's who you identify with it doesn't necessarily have to be by color anymore but it some people will de- identify it by color but really it's whose attitude do you like it's how a lot of voters are go are attacking this i've seen a lot of voters who want who mostly attack this from a, a vibes perspective from an attitudes perspective yeah. and if they see their attitude reflected in donald trump then that's you know what a lot of them will gravitate toward that i think is the i think a very important crux of what we see that because the identity politics is less explicitly about the color of your skin now now it's closer to your attitude what's the identity of your attitude and voters are voting on the identity of their attitude which is why some black a lot of black young black men are shifting to more conservative stances I think they see their attitude reflected in the current brand that the Republicans have. More so, damn, than damn, the damn, Kellen, you bring up a very good point that I, I was hoping to get to. But you just, again, for me, you just nailed the head on on the nail on the, that vibe, the attitude. You know, the, the Harris campaign; its overarching theme is joy. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I could. I, I love you know more joy and and hope. <laughs> and love, you know, in my life, who doesn't? However, that doesn't pay the bills. That, that does not address my kitchen table issues. As we were talking off screen uh, about uh, Trump's latest um, economic uh, proposal, uh, capping uh, credit card interest rates at 10%. Just last Friday, unfortunately, this announcement uh, got buried in the news because people were talking about uh, these damn that. cats and dogs, uh, yeah. but he proposed no taxes on overtime pay. That that's freaking huge. I'm willing. Yeah. I, I, I was telling my fiance, I'm I'm thinking about going working for a, a high end restaurant. You know, maybe two nights out of the week, and you know, um, and since he's proposing, uh, he ori- he was the original. Uh, um, proposer of uh, no tax on uh, tips, going back and running up the you know the bill on uh, on, on uh, working for a high end restaurant and and earn you know just tips and you know a minimal um, you know salary and, and 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 just make a fortune on tips. Mm-hmm. Going yeah. back to a, a regular nine to five where I can earn overtime and, you know, work overtime out the wazoo. I did that for the state of Illinois. And, you know, if that money was uh, wasn't taxable. Oh, my goodness. I, so it's so it's those economic uh, whether he would follow through or not. We don't know. We do have a past track record where he did deliver on promises like. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, tax Supreme cuts, court. Supreme Court, regulation. uh, regulations. So, you know, I see why people are interested. A new demographic is is interested in the Trump Vance uh, ticket versus mm-hmm. the Harris Walls ticket. Yeah. You know, your feelings versus your uh, checkbook. Yeah. And the and and of course you to, just to like and just add a foiling layer. There's also the feelings of your checkbook. Ooh. You know, you know how a lot of people will just gauge the economy based on their checkbook, which is a part mm-hmm. of it, but you know not the whole thing. And again, whether or not these solutions actually work, one could say, oh, you know, no tax on tips. You know, just uh, make it harder to tip your employees. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> you know, or you know. No overtime pay. That's it. We're just not doing overtime at all anymore. 
Um, so then, you know, there are way, you know, there are ways that these things can backfire. We're talking about like um, price price controls on credit cards, or like I should say, interest rate controls on credit cards done by the government. Another thing that Trump has recently um, commented on. Um, again, you know, uh, you know, even if it sounds better on paper than it might be in practice, even if it's a bit of a risky policy when you break it down to brass tacks, who the hell? other than nerds like us breaks it down to brass tacks, right? <laughs> it's the feelings of your pocketbook as well. And again, if, if they feel like they have more solutions from Trump um, because he's more specific, um, regardless of the nature of the policy, then, they, then they're likely to interpret that as being a more in-depth plan, more, a more in-depth concept of a plan. <laughs> Kellen, if uh, former President Trump is reelected uh, again. I've gone on record already, given the uh, certain circumstances right now. If things remain static, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris is likely to be reelected. However, saying that, uh, if DJT is reelected uh, and he follows through on you know this uh, on these proposals. Um, Man, I, I'm going to be working and working and working and just running up, you know, as much as I can because it, it's just and, and there's arguments you can make for these proposals. Mm -hmm. um, the math that I've done supports the no tax on tips and also the uh, mm -hmm. no tax on overtime pay. Um, I have very little uh, credit card debt. So, you know, 10% cap, shoot, I might as well just pay it off. I keep it just, uh, I don't know, the uh, old wives tale of if you keep a balance on your credit card, you know, that helps your credit score. I don't know if that's true or not. But, you know, man, we're talking about a whole new type of economy. That is your opportunity economy. Yeah, it's it's a, it, it's a, it sounds so exciting it really does yeah. um and, and I, of course i will i will forever criticize the trump vance campaign for leaning more into the damn cats and dogs than the actual like underlying things that they could actually lean into you know or saying that or just going on multiple rants saying that kamala harris hates juice like, <laughs> could, <laughs> there are so many better angles to attack um, their own campaign from like they should they are they really are their own worst enemy um it's kind yes, of insane but but you're right, David. Like the this is kind of what's missing from the Harris campaign for a lot of people, and I think it is important for the Harris campaign and Democrats as a whole to not keep shedding these numbers um, for them. Um, of course, for Republicans, you know, they can lean even further into this angle because it does seem to resonate with blocks, several many important prominent blocks of voters. Um, you know, I kind of agree with you. Um, I, I'll definitely agree with you on the tax on tips things. There should never be taxes on tips. Um, right, you know, all right. You know, but you, but you're, but I, regardless of what you think of the rest of the policy, specifics matter. You know, yes, it does. The the cons, the idea of them having a plan matters mm -hmm. more than the plan itself. I would say in this um, political landscape, having making an appeal, like, having any plan, even if it's a bad plan matters more than have mm -hmm. it is more important than having no plan you know what i mean oh yeah it, it's more important to have proposals that are wrong almost than to have no proposals <laughs> with i think with the voting landscape these days and i don't think all of these are wrong i'm just pointing this out like as a whole because this is also something that matters to the harris campaign yes whatever the harris campaign should propose alternatives and or concessions on it some things where necessary to um, to, to keep their muster up. Um, like David said, if things stay as they are right now, it looks like Harris has a slight advantage. Yeah, It looks like it would be a very close race um, with Trump likely yes. doing better in this race than he did in 2020 um, yes. from what we've seen so far, specifically in Arizona, which is a specific, specific, specific? specifically Arizona and Nevada and Georgia. Mm -hmm. Um Although right now Harris is actually looking better in North Carolina than Biden did, very surprisingly. Um, the it is important for them to not slow down though, if they actually want to win. It's very important for the Trump campaign, if they want to win, to emphasize the actual damn elements of their platform. 
yeah. <laughs> instead of you know just the entertainment. I mean, the entertainment made Trump in 2016. It really yeah. did. That was what got him through that primary was yeah. the fact that he was entertaining. Um, but you know, he's established now, you know, yeah. and, and he's proposing a lot of new stuff and it is kind of silly for him to not always lean into it, but just getting back to the point, the back to the actual point of our discussion, we do see a shift in how, um, a lot of people, but especially minority groups, vote. We see we're seeing a shift because yeah. it is no longer just about you know supporting rights or not supporting rights. Both sides support rights to some degree now. You know, both of them just ultimately both sides present alternatives. You know, with it with neither being objectively better or worse for the min most minority communities in question. Um, the attitude. Um, identity politics mm -hmm. is taking center stage instead of demographics um, identity politics. And, and, that's it is important. and it's important um, for anybody running for office, any campaign to remember that. You know, my final word is this, if people, uh, voters, uh, because not all of us are going to vote. However, for voters to just sit with themselves and look at this election from their point of view, first, mm -hmm. and then from their family's point of view, second, and then the community that they live in, their point of view, and then from the nation. But start with yourself first and what your kitchen table issues are, because I look at both campaigns from the perspective of a young uh, 50-ish black male, divorce, no children in my care, business owner. And those policies affect me now and into the future. And mm -hmm. so I look through the uh, prism. Uh, I look at these policies through that type of prism. Uh, so I encourage voters to do the same. And I believe, I think, I know that many of us are going to find out that the person that we may have had decided to vote for is probably not the one who will deliver on the policies mm -hmm. that really matter to you as a voter, yeah. as a citizen. Yeah. And, and just adding on to that, obviously I attack from a different angle to David. I consider myself uh, younger than David. Um, <laughs> he considers himself a youngish black man at the age of 50. I consider myself young at the age of 21. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but regardless... <laughs> You know, I, I obviously I'll have my own kitchen table issues because, you know, and a lot of my stuff is more about, you know, I think what David's really interested in is the policy surrounding his business. You know, I'm I think a lot of the policy I will tend to focus on is the policy about my education and the policy of where I live. That's, I think, really what gets to me, because, you know, if I were to support, you know, policy that will seek to develop an area. I'll, I'll, I'll still be working when that's done. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's a worthwhile issue for me, but maybe not for everybody. And it's also important to know, you know, cause we, we focus a lot on negativity in politics, things that are bad. It's also important to acknowledge, you know, what is there, but also whether or not either of the candidates actually have what you need. Um, if what you want is, if what you want isn't actually represented, I strongly recommend checking out third parties. Um, That's correct. And, and if you find that, you know, one of them really speaks to you, then maybe you'll want to vote for them. If you find that you would rather uh, destroy the lesser of two evils, um, vote, vote in that way, I guess. Uh, do right. it, do whatever you want. Um, they'll let me tell you. But yeah. there's always a lot to consider. And it's important yeah. to look at the actual platforms of things. Yeah, there's Jill Stein and Cornell West. So, yes, you're right, Kellen. You're right. Yeah. I, I, I personally want to do more looking into the third party races. They've been very quiet ever since RFK dropped out uh, oh, this particular check, cycle. Check out the Jill Stein. She's made a couple of appearances recently. Uh, Cornell West uh, did something significant. I, I can't remember if it was in Virginia or Maryland, but uh, they've been in the news lately. Yeah. I remember I remember Stein. She's been here forever. Yes. Green Party. She's been, been a bit of a perennial candidate. Um yeah. 
yeah, I think that's all we have to say. So please like, comment, share, support our community. We want to grow our community. We want to have more authentic conversations. Do you disagree with us entirely? Am I personally an idiot? Please let us know in the comments below. Please bring your facts, not your feelings. Um, if you have a specific claim, just try to point us in the right direction. So that way we're all on the same plane of discussion. But yeah, that's all I have to say. This has been You Can't Make This Shit Up. We are Jane Washington, and we are also out.